I built this fountain out of 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. The first step of this project was making the water basin and backing board. This piece is basically a wooden box with a tall back. After using my cordless circular saw to cut out the five sides, I headed inside for assembly. Even though I was going to seal the box with epoxy and silicone, I wanted to use a waterproof adhesive when building the box, just to be safe. Gorilla Glue isn't something I use very often, but due to the fact that it's waterproof and that it foams up to fill gaps, it was pretty perfect for this application. I used finished nails and screws to add one more layer of security. Gorilla Glue is water activated, which is why you'll see me spraying down pieces throughout this project. I only used finish nails to reinforce the front piece as I was going for a very clean minimal look and I didn't want exposed screw heads. With the basin built, let's move on to the much more interesting part of this project, the tiled plywood centerpiece of the fountain. The core of this is a plywood plate which runs the full diagonal of the basin. To make the tiles, I started cutting strips of plywood of various thicknesses, one quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch, and one inch thick strips. I kept cutting until I had enough strips to cover the entire backing piece. I used Gorilla Glue to attach the tiles to the backing piece, as well as some CA glue with the activator to clamp the pieces in place while the Gorilla Glue dried. I gradually worked my way up the board, choosing pieces that I thought looked good, attaching them, and cutting them to length with my Japanese pole saw. I paused at about two-thirds of the way up the board to cut a cavity for the water tube. This allowed me to hide the tube behind the board while bringing water to the top of the fountain. This will make a bit more sense later on in the video, but for now, let's get back to the incredibly satisfying process of attaching the tiles to the backing board. This process doesn't just look satisfying. This was probably the most relaxing afternoon I've ever spent making something. But after that lovely few hours of intuitive on-the-fly design, I had a bit of a problem to solve. How to hide and secure the water tube at the top of the fountain. I ended up with a really elegant solution, an undercut shelf that hides the tube and provides just enough friction to tightly hold it in place. Water and wood typically aren't the best combination, so I needed a way to waterproof this thing. I started by coating the inside of the basin with Alumalite Amazing Clearcast Epoxy Resin. For the tile plate, I applied epoxy to the front, sides, and the portion of the back that would be permanently submerged underwater. I coated the rest of the fountain in three coats of exterior polyurethane. Once everything was dry, I sealed the inside edges of the basin with silicone. I also used the silicone to plug the end of the water tube, as I only wanted water coming out along its length. But to make water come out along its length, I had to make a bunch of holes in the tube. I started out by marking areas with my ice pick, and then cut out the holes with the scissors on my Swiss Army knife. I wanted to do this with a drill bit, but drilling holes in this flexible tubing didn't really work. With the tube done, I was finally ready to test the fountain. After making sure that the basin wasn't leaking, I dropped in the 100 gallon per hour fountain pump that I bought for this project. I thought it might be a good idea to do this first test in a plastic bin which ended up being a good call. You 
you can see here that this design allows me to hide the pump behind the tile plate. After installing the tube, the only thing left to do was plug in the fountain and admire my work. Or so I thought. While the fountain was making a really nice babbling brook sound, you can see here that I was getting a lot of splash over the front edge of the basin. I figured that reducing the water flow would probably help with this issue, so I ended up switching out the pump for a less powerful model that's rated at 60 gallons per hour rather than 100 gallons per hour. This helped a lot and almost got rid of the problem altogether, but I was still getting small drops of water that would pop out the front of the fountain every once in a while, and over time, a small puddle would develop in the front of the fountain, which isn't really something you want indoors. So I thought to myself, well, a small puddle isn't really a big deal outside, so maybe this would make a great outdoor fountain. And it was a really nice addition to our backyard. It definitely made the whole area feel a lot more zen gardeny. But at the end of the day, this is a shared backyard without a permanent source of power. So I thought I might give the fountain to someone who does have a backyard of their own. That is, until I emptied out the fountain, removed the tile board, and noticed that the plywood was beginning to warp, and the tiles at the bottom were separating from the backing board. Yeah, if you were thinking that I didn't use quite enough epoxy earlier on in the video, I think you were right. So, what happened? Well, I didn't use quite enough epoxy when coating the tile plate, and water was able to get into the wood, warp it, and pull the tiles away from the backing plate. As you can probably tell, I really wanted to limit how much epoxy I used, but I was definitely a little too stingy. I'm really happy I didn't go with my original plan of only using exterior polyurethane. And add to that the fact that the basin isn't wide enough to accommodate all the splashover from the fountain. Now, my original idea for this fountain was to mount it to the wall, which is why I didn't want to make the basin very wide. But after constructing it out of 3 quarter inch plywood, I quickly realized how heavy this thing is and that I probably wouldn't be able to mount it to the wall. So as a whole, this fountain doesn't really work like I originally envisioned it. But after editing this whole video, I don't really see this as a failure. It's interesting to look at these cumulative mistakes in hindsight, and they don't actually seem that bad. I could easily fix any one of those things. I could rebuild the basin, make it wider, I could coat this in more epoxy and it would probably be waterproof, and I could probably figure out a way to mount it to the wall, or like I mentioned, give it to someone who has a backyard that could use a nice zen fountain. So I'm not really seeing this project as a failure, more like a very pretty learning experience that I might get back to at some point. But for now, I have spent so much time on this project that I kind of want to put it aside for now, share this video with you, move on to my next project, and then who knows, maybe a year from now, I'll get this thing up and running, and in the meantime, maybe I'll use this beautiful tile plate as a wall hanging. But until then, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the process. Have a great day. Do you want to come in and say your thing? All right, Penny, tell the people what you think. Should we keep it? I think you should reinvigorate it and make it a penny fountain. A penny fountain? I think she would love that. Yep. I have nothing left to say. <laughs>